that was very unfair. The damage you caused to that governor is irreversible. It is very difficult now to watch that thing from the public knowledge. And here you are. I don't know what you are gaining by that. So when I was coming here, I had those things in my mind, whether you are also coming to tell me that I've also made a budget for my state house at home huh? and some peacekeeping somewhere. So let's work together. Let's support devolution. And, oh, Bwana Chairman, we all know where the counties are coming from. We started from that level where we were complaining about inadequacy of staff, the staff that were inherited with inadequate capacities and abilities to perform certain functions. And we are saying trying to build those blocks. I can't say that we are 100% as at now. We are still moving on. This accountability that you are talking about, let everybody be accountable. But let us not doing Kenyans that it is only the governors who are corrupt. Actually, one time it will even force me to read for you the, the Bible. Professor, you, you are a Christian. You read the Bible. I'll read the Bible for people so that they may know that uh, uh, castigating others for no apparent reason is not good. Others, when a chairman, um, out of what the auditor uh, general highlighted, I think we are on the right path. We have taken all the necessary steps to ensure that we confirm with the requirements and we keep proper records. It is my desire that I get the unqualified reports. And I think uh, come 2019, 2020, my accounts will be qualified. I'm working towards that. Otherwise, there are circumstances that may be beyond somebody's uh, control that may warrant the kind of uh, adverse reports that you have mentioned that uh, Migori County has been receiving. So for today, I've come here to present um, the audited accounts for 2017-2018, and I want to promise that uh, the others that you have demanded will also be availed. I also want us to agree uh, with uh, the position that uh, Oparanya has taken. That is my chairman at, at the COG. Actually, wherever he is, and seeing me here, I think he's equally very, very disappointed because he, ha he has a very bad experience with the Senate. When he was brought in here, uh, I think that was in the last parliament, his own senator brought him to roast him. Hmm? That was really unfair. For example, now I have my senator here. He can't come here to roast to me. Hmm? <laughs> and when a chairman, I hope that if you will attempt to roast to me, you will also give me time to roast him because <laughs> he's one of the he, guys... He doesn't manage public funds, yeah, so just, he, just uh, proceed in an he, orderly he and cautious fashion. When a chairman, he manages negatively because the counties are expected to raise a lot of own revenue. But if now my own inside the public needs to collect, and here I'm required to collect a lot of funds, Bwana Chairman, that is bad. That is very bad. And I think that is something that should be condemned. If I can be given time to play for you some clip here. Uh, about Gov Gov Governor, we shall deal with issues highlighted by the Auditor General. Yeah, not but, extraneous issues. Yeah, but Chairman, so you please, give me time please, to, to give my opening remarks. I, I am, I I am guiding you. you. And the uh, Governor, just, just a minute. Okay, now... Uh, 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 just just, just uh, listen uh, to me, listen uh, to me uh, for 30 uh, seconds. I'm through with my opening remarks. You are through, thank you. We have been extremely patient. Those who have covered this committee would know that not many Governors would get away with the kind of remarks that have been made by the Governor. But uh, we have chosen to be deliberately patient because we do not want to roll in the mud. We want to deal with the issues that are captured in the Auditor General's report. Now, before I respond to some very specific issues, let me give an opportunity to the members to respond to the uh, Governor's opening uh, remarks. Chair, I want to 
let me be the open by telling the governor. Governor, I think and I have seen you have very qualified people. And uh, I believe you have eaten books, so to speak, in quote. The report that the chair was reading here, the ones you are referring to, is open secret. If you go to the website of the Auditor General, that is the information that is there. The Senate does not produce financial statements. Even today, as you have come, we will be looking at your financial statement. If the Auditor has not picked some of the issues, we will highlight them and ask the auditor, how come that you did not pick up this issue? We are not here just to come and talk for the, for the sake of talking. We'll go deeper and look at even those financial statements. So when we see those issues in the financial statement like the chair say, did last time, and we highlighted them, it is not because we wanted to shame anybody. We wanted to fight facts, which we'll still get to. So be informed, Governor that we are not here to hunt anybody. We are given information like you have come with information. If we find something that is not turning up in that document, we will definitely get to the bottom of it. I think, Mr. Chair, that's what I would want to say. Very well said. Senator Olekina. Uh, thank you, Chair. Governor, I want to uh, maybe just make brief comments on your submissions. Uh, on the issue of Aichito, I'm on record saying that is laziness in terms of the governor and also the staff. And if we find similar things here, we'll also, I'll also will not hesitate to use the same words. Because the Auditor General does not generate financial statements. The financial statements which are attached to the Auditor General report originates from the county governments. Number two, um, you've indicated that there is a position you've taken as a Council of Governors. Uh, and that you are worried about what your chair would say. Let me remind you that the Senate is not subject to what a group of governors in a club can decide. We are guided by the Constitution, and we shall follow the Constitution to the latter. We only look at the documents you provide. Article 96 is very, very, very clear. Our role here is to defend the interest of counties and also to ensure that you as a county government spend the money, Wanjiko's money, appropriately. We are here as part of the accountability cycle, which we are accountable to Wanjiko in making sure that where there are issues, then we can be able to come with serious recommendations. If your staff took a template from the national government and used those vote heads to be able to report to the expenditures, the only way we can do is to go with what is being presented by your staff but we will not come and say, Governor, here in your financial statements, you made a mistake. So I hope that we can be able to look at each case by case. Because your history in terms of uh, the financial statements that has been presented to the Auditor General, they have all been, majority of them have been uh, disclaimers, which means there have been a limitation of scope. If you cannot provide the, the auditors with uh, backup information, then how do you expect the Governor to render an opinion? So I think, Chair, um, I'll stop there and now interact, get into the, to the details of uh, your, your, your submissions. Let, let's first hear from Senator Fatumadulo. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Governor Karibu. Uh, Chair, let me say this. It's really very wrong for governors to defend what they don't know. Because the appearance of the governor for Kiambu here was politicized. As a Senate, we are not here for politics. We are here for serious business. The, uh, the report that we read to Governor Waititu, as my colleagues have said, it's on the website. And it's really very wrong when the governor actually goes before the media and says, the chair of the committee produced a document that he has not even come across and crucified him. That is really wrong. Auditor General's report is a public document that is in the website. Anybody can read. But for governors to go and politicize matters of finances that are really... Okay. Um, Bwana Chairman... I think uh, the first disbursement uh, th that we got 
for the financial year 2017-2018 must have been in July, in, in August. But uh, that was a very, very special year because even the disbursements for the previous year came very late. Actually, they came in July. We are expecting, I think... Uh, a so, I want us to be specific because uh, this is the only way we can follow through. Yeah. The auditor issued a disclaimer. You stated that you could not provide the documents because the fire destroyed documents, which covered two financial years. You were saying that you received the first disbursement of money in August. How then could you pay without having documents to show, to help you understand who you owe? Okay, okay but I, Chairman, I think it is easy, and that is where, where I was uh, going to. First of all, the disbursements for the previous year, that is 2016-2017, uh, they came late. Instead of receiving everything, like 100%, by or before 30th June, as is expected annually, this one now overlapped. We were getting it in July. Then, out of the monies that we received from the National Treasury, there are certain things that uh, you must just pay, like the salaries. They are easily generated. You pay them. Then, from the documents that are kept by the contractors, and I think that will now answer your last question, that uh, was indeed possible for us to recreate these files. It was possible. So they could come with their, uh, with their vouchers, uh, the agreements that we had signed, and uh, the physical verifications of the jobs that they had done. Like you give somebody to go and construct a building, the building is there. The guy comes with the documents that had been signed for him, then you pay, Bwana uh, Chairman. Chairman, just a uh, quick question. Are you, uh, I mean, Chairman, this is a very important matter because you are stating on record and on off that Treasury dispersed money to you for the previous financial year after the close of the financial year. You're saying July. Yeah. So you are saying that is your statement. Mm -hmm. So, Treasury closes IFMIS, we all know that IFMIS does not operate, but somehow they send you money for 2016-2017 in July. Is that really factual, Governor? Hmm? Governor? Oh, okay, oh, but, but I, Chairman, oh, let, let uh, my Chief Officer also respond to it. Because being a cash basis accounting, then we would uh, be able to see some balances brought forward in the financial uh, statements for 1718. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would like to state as follows. Normally, the National Treasury will endeavor to give money by 30th of June. But the process of accessing money from the control budget takes time. Like in that particular year, we accept the money for June in somewhere, and we are given up to 12th July to, to use the money for June the previous year. That was in record. Because the process of getting approval from control budget for you to access funds takes time. For example, today is 13th. Assuming National Treasury gives you money today, Chair, for you to access that money, it will take you a week or so before you get approval from the control budget office. So there's a time lag. So that's why some of these things are paid after the year end. So sometime on the 30th June, on the midnight of 30th June, you realize you've been given your allocations. It means that, therefore, all the money you've been given, you must spend on the, the last financial year. That's what it means. And even this year, Chair, if you are keen, we have got one month to the year end. You realize it's right now, the count of Migori, we are seeing old four months in arrears. Okay, I'd like us to see the forest for the trees, because we might get lost in some minute details, and come back to the broader issues around this fire and destruction of records. Senator Professor Ngeri. Governor Obado, you know there are certain documents which are critical and crucial in the management of the county. And particularly the ones which seem to have been gutted in the fire. 
did it occur to you in the process of keeping safe custody of these documents that you ought to have created a special facility fireproof rather than react to a situation that happened just one question how come when this fire did happen 2016 17 you do not take the necessary measures until I presume what we are reading here is second fire 2017-2018 or is it the same fire that uh, consumed dog? No, let me finish first. So, can you please clarify that point? Number three, I'm finding it very difficult, having been an accounting officer, that if means will be opened for you in the first week of July for you to expend the money that you did not expend in the previous uh, books of account in the previous uh, financial year. One of the problems we have even here in, in, in Parliament is the exchequer releases. How lucky, can you tell us what charm you used to be able to get Treasury, allow you the use of IVMIS and uh, access 1.5 billion Kenya shillings to take care of those resources that you want to take care of? Okay, uh, members, do you consolidate? That way we can move a little bit faster, uh, but take note of the questions. Senator Matangi, because uh, if, if we ask and you respond, it will take long. Mm -hmm. I want us to put together the views and then you respond uh, singly. Yes, uh, Ch I just have, uh, I think, very few, but, but straightforward. Uh, first, uh, Governor, uh, I've, I've seen from the explanations you've given, but can you confirm to the, to, to the committee? Uh, does the county of Nigori now ha has a fire engine? Have you purchased one or are you still in the process of after this fire? And then two, have you then since then installed CCTV cameras and footage and, and, and uh, the, the, rele the relevant uh, equipment to capture that? But then also the third and I think the most important of my questions will be you, you started to explain very well when you disputed uh, that uh, as far as the records of the Auditor General is concerned that he is reporting on this as a blanket figure of 1.5 billion, but it is possible to substantiate uh, and and support some of some of the expenditures. And so, what I wanted to understand from from you, uh, Governor, is out of this 1.5 billion, and I'm glad you said that it is possible actually to reconstruct some of them. That is that, that's uh, that, that's uh, what you said. So, out of 1.5 billion, in your view, and with the uh, probably in the process then of having then to pay out this 1.5 billion that you have paid out, where people came with vouchers, where people came with contracts, others came, uh, you know, you, you carried out uh, physical verification. As of now, and probably with the response you have given, out of this 1.5 billion, how much are you able then to account for, or have you accounted for everything? And given then documents which would be called currently then supporting documents that were then hitherto not available to the Auditor General. So, so I think it is, it's, it's important, uh, Chair, uh, that, that then, uh, you know, that, that line is introduced by the, by the Governor. Because he, he said, uh, and if you allow me to, to just emphasize on that, that, that the Auditor has reported this 1.5 billion, but indeed, uh, he could have only been missing uh, a voucher of, of maybe, let's say, maybe 100 million or 50 million. In your response, eh? Sorry, uh, I'll also ask you to look at uh, 164 of the Public Finance Management Act and uh, 163. Both of them give uh, direct and unequivocal uh, responsibility uh, to the uh, uh, Treasury, your Treasury, the County Treasury, to ensure that there is financial records and they are submitted to the auditor. And it's not negotiable, it's mandatory. If you look at both sections, 163 and 164, the law is so clear it does not even give the possibility of the documents getting burnt or disappearing. In other words, the law presupposes that the county government will always have these documents. Uh, if one disappears, you have to prepare the statement. Whichever way, that's why the electronic form and the backup, it does not give uh, anybody the leeway 
to say that, oh, I can't prepare the financial statement because the documents got burnt. I want to find out from the governor if they were able to comply with this. How were they able to comply with this direct requirement of the law? Then finally, you will notice that uh, at uh, section 197.1 and section 197.1, 197 and 196.7, they are offenses for not complying with the law. Now, the DCI or whoever was investigating said that offenses were not uh, committed. Have they looked at these sections? And do they, did they really get uh, somebody sufficiently equipped with the knowledge of law to advise them that offenses may have not been committed? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Senator. Uh, very heavy uh, comments. Um, uh, Senator Fatuma, then the governor would respond. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, mine is uh, the report of the task force. If you look, Chair, the report of the task force is a very shallow document. Clearly does not explain how the committee carried out its investigation. I don't know whether this is intentional because uh, clearly they should have followed all the, the, the bullets of uh, the terms of reference and explain what their findings are. But in this particular case, they have not done that. So for me, the report looks very shallow. It's not comprehensive. I don't know whether this is intentional. And then secondly, the, le the letter of the DCI, I think it's only one and a half pages, clearly does not explain what their findings are. It's very scanty information. Finally, I'm sure when the fire occurred, there could have been uh, security officers or security guards within the compound. And they should have been actually been... Uh, uh, investigated because they are responsible to what has happened that particular night and that information is not anywhere within the report so we want to know whether the officers were investigated whether they have been arrested whether they have been uh, charged what is the position of the security officers on the ground that particular day I thank you thank you senator the question is is fire natural or man-made? Was this an act of God or this was an act of man? If this office was struck by lightning, we would be having a different conversation because we'd be saying that the gods chose to strike the procurement office. If it's fire as a result of electrical fault, every student of risk management will tell you that is a man-made disaster. Man-made means it is as a result of the errors of omissions and commissions of man. And therefore, there must be responsibility and accountability in line with the statutes that Senator for Migori has read out. I'm looking at your written response, particularly where you've uh, summarized the DCI reports. Uh, under Directorate of Criminal Investigation, the second bullet there, there says... The fire could have been caused by electric fault since after the first fire was put off, the second building caught fire after two hours. So you have this situation where your office is on fire. And maybe you didn't have firefighters. Uh, 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 Senator Matangi asked that question. You're going to respond. So four or five years down the line, Migori County, the county executive, the offices next to the governor's office, Fire breaks out and no single fire engine checks in. You wonder what would happen if the market was to catch fire. Because now this is a seat of government. But even after the first fire has gone off, two hours later, another building catches fire and is burnt to the ground. This is uh, the kind of things that can make a movie on Netflix uh, if it was not as serious as it is. Now, Governor, considering the issues that have been raised by all my colleagues, may you respond? There was a small bit of Senator Ledamolekina's query that was not responded to. That schedule that he had referred us to, 
I was wondering why it was blank. I hope that that will also be addressed. So please respond to the issues raised by the senators. Oh, okay, Chair. Um, I'll uh, allow my CEO to also respond. Uh, but I also wanted to correct something that I had mentioned earlier about uh, reconstruction. Actually, I mentioned uh, voucher. We cannot reconstruct a voucher. But I said that uh, from uh, the records held by our suppliers, we, can, we could get some information. Now, um, Mwishimiwa Senetongeri, the fire happened only once, but there were two fires. One happened, then two hours later. It is not that uh, uh, one happened and then some months or some days later. It was the same night. Um, as at now, we are in the process of procuring a firefighting equipment. It is not our fault that we have never had one because we have made several attempts. Each time somebody gets uh, uh, an award to bring, they come back to us, they want to be paid in advance, and that is contrary to the law. So um, I just wanted to clarify that we should not be blamed as to why we do not have a fire engine. On that particular uh, could, could you, so, so you confirm that Migori County does not have a single functional fire engine? For the county, no. But in Migori County, we have a, a firefighting engine in Sony. And even that particular night, it was called. But for so, the county government, none. For, for the, the county, reasons that you have for the uh, given. County, for the reasons that I've just mentioned, we don't have our own. But we are in the process of procuring one. This will be our fifth or sixth attempt to get one. Yeah. So if you look at the struggle. Okay, we proceed. But uh, if you look at the fourth schedule of the Constitution, firefighting is so explicitly, so clearly assigned to the county government that five years down the line, despite the legal and procurement issues, it is a key <laughs> deliverable for a county it government. It is true, Bwana Chairman. But do you expect me to break the law to procure one? Like somebody is awarded to bring, the next morning they want to be paid in advance. If I'm cheated to do that, you will be the first person to roast me here. Senator, the Professor, the other counties are procured firefighters yeah. without uh, breaking the, the law. The, the contractor or the one who wants supply is looking at your books of account and saying no. It's a no-go zone area. Could that be one of the problems? CRB. Uh, uh, I, I, do, I don't know, Mr. Mayor Senator, what they are looking at. But I know that we have made several attempts. Last year we made, this year, uh, we are also making that attempt and hoping that we'll get a serious guy to deliver a good fire, firefighting engine. Uh, but Governor, no. when, when you're on that, yeah. because um, we've engaged with you before, and, um, and uh, now that you have explicitly said that you have attempted to, uh, to, to procure a fire engine and you have had those um, you know, missed opportunities or, or aborted attempts, and, and you're also conversant, and I'm sure you have a legal department, and uh, given the seriousness and the importance of the matter, you know that there are also sections of the law that you can be able to invoke or, or, or use to procure specialized equipment like uh, a fire engine. You could also use uh, circumstances, for example, like uh, cases of the necessity or, or the speciality of the, of the equipment because uh, a fire engine is not just any other vehicle that you can buy. There are sections of the law that you can use uh, and, and be able to procure a fire engine. So what I'm asking is, uh, one, would you tell us how far are you in this new process? Have you then followed the same uh, rules and uh, procedures you followed to fill the other five times? Because that would then mean that you're likely to fill a sixth time, you know? And, uh, and then, is it that uh, your legal department has been, uh, maybe for lack of a better word, uh, inept, such so that they have not advised you 
that it's explicit in law, sure, and that you can use certain provisions of uh, the law to procure the engines yourself. Okay, Governor, respond and then uh, also respond to the other pending issues oh, okay. so that we move on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, my legal department is up to date and uh, I think they are, they, they, it is a very good department. Uh, I also know that uh, there are certain provisions that may make us uh, procure that firefighting equipment. But I want to share with the committee that uh, there was a time when we used the list of government, uh, the, use, the, the list of uh, pre-qualified suppliers from the national government. We were really hit for that. Given that we have a rough terrain, that time we wanted to buy uh, Toyota ambulances. So from that list, we went to Toyota, and we know that Toyota, there's only one dealer here for Toyota. If you go to the others, they are second-hand dealers. So we went to that one, being guided by the government list of pre-qualified suppliers. And Toyota required that we had to pay because their business is not to sell ambulances. They only sell pickups. So we went to Pitts, and they told us that now if you want an ambulance, you can uh, decide on the requirements so that we fabricate it for you. They gave us the logbooks complete with everything, like the chassis number, engine number. But when the auditors came and we showed them what we had done, they marked us wrong. They said, no, 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 no. You, you guys, you have violated the, the law. Why have you paid and those things are here? When they were still there, the ambulances, the, the ambulances came. But still, they could not correct their records. They still insisted that, no, you had paid in advance. So I'm aware that uh, there are those avenues, but we are not allowed to follow them. The moment we try, we'll still get that beating. So right now, we have looked for somebody who is competent, somebody with a track record, or somebody who has delivered ambulances to other counties, and I'm sure that uh, we are now not going to fail. Um, going back to, I mean, sorry, sorry firefighting. I, 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 didn't fire fighting, to, sorry. I didn't want to interject again, <laughs> Governor, but, uh, but uh, you see, <laughs> Well, I, I hear you, and that is a, a discussion between you and the Auditor General. Yeah, yeah. Because, of course, you know, even from the explanation, if I was an auditor myself, I would yeah. still uh, come and, and nail you again. Yeah. Because uh, in attempting to follow that law, when you say that uh, you have identified Toyota, uh, that in itself is a, is a, is, is, is a, you know, it's, is a fault in law. Because you cannot, an illegality. It's an illegality. You cannot pinpoint a specific or specify. Maybe those are the issues. But 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 you, you can you can uh, uh, single source and, and and still use the law i mean there is a there is a law that would allow you to do that because that's specialized equipment you have a, a situation that requires you you know to 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 procure one but uh, anyway i i don't want to belabor yeah, the point yeah, the yeah. point is that uh, you should, the migori should be able to get a fine engine. S S senator uh, let's not make that the debate the mm -hmm. procurement because you're the ceo you've got the laws you have the money you have a budget Execution is a work of CEOs. Uh, so that is within your purview. I think the fact is you don't have a fire uh, engine. You are in the process of acquiring, but it's something that needs to be expedited mm -hmm. because it's not a shared function. It's mm -hmm. a county function. Mm -hmm. I shudder to think of what would happen if you are the town that neighbors Homer Bay called Rongo. There was a fire, and at the same time, there was a fire in Migori, and you have to rely on Sony Sugar firefighters. Those are the things that create the perception that counties are not doing enough because the public sometimes do not want to understand the processes that you have to go through to acquire those items. So we have dealt with that. Uh, let's move into the other issues that okay. were raised. The, the other issues uh, were raised by Senator Ongeri. Uh, the Senator was wondering how lucky we were to have been receiving funds after the close of the financial year. I want to say that uh, it is not only Migori County, but I want to believe that uh, that is an experience with nearly all the counties. And uh, my CEO had given here a very, very practical example. As we speak, we are left with only one month to the end of the financial year. We are still owed over three point something billion 
from the national treasury. I'm so sure that within this one month that is left, the national treasury will not disburse the 3.6 billion. They will do it past 30th of June. That is a practical experience. Yeah? So, Senator, I just wanted to allay your fears that it is not only done to us, but nearly all the counties. And I think as senators, you need to do something about that, such that uh, by 15th of every month, we should be getting our disbursements. Chair. We find it very difficult for Chair, planning. Point of order. Yeah. Uh, Senator Olekino. Chair, the question has not been answered. I, I think it's uh, proper for us to really look at the context and the question that we ask in regards to the issue of documents, so that, you know, I'm, reconstructing I'm, of the documents. I'm, so I'm, can we be specific because we have so many other issues and this is just the first question. So I was going chair, to guide the, the governor to, chair, the to, to quickly, yeah, to quickly the, deal with the remaining questions. I, I'm just, just move I'm it just, faster. I'm just trying to be sequential. Yes. Senator yes. Ngeri is the one who started. Yeah. Then Senator Omitangi. Then Senator Lekina. So make it move faster. Yeah. Otherwise, so, we'll be here up to six, and then you'll have to come back again tomorrow, which I, I'm not sure you'd like to come back again tomorrow. So just let it run faster. Okay. So first, uh, can I hand over to him? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would like, by answering Senator uh, Olekina, he raised some issues on the progress on follow-up on auditor recommendations. The, the, the blank page, the, the 27, page 27 of the financial statement. These issues are normally raised and they're looked at when the auditors come to do the next audit. So when the auditors, this, this, this is a template from the National Treasury. This, this was a template. That's why it is written here, management comments, and normally, before the audit is done, every financial year, auditors are sitting here. They will run on the issues, the pending issues of the previous year to see how they were resolved, or if not resolved, what action are being, being taken. Chair, I, would, I want to... The, the question is this. Why is it blank? I have looked at your report for prior year, 2016-2017. It is populated. Why was it left blank in 2017-2018? So I will, I will yeah, the only thing I will say, maybe it's an oversight, but because these issues are normally resolved when auditors come to, before they start the financial year's audit, the current year's audit, they normally go on the previous, prior year's issues with the management. Governor, uh, Chair, sorry. That so is th that, this one, Chair, chair just if point of order. Me, let, let, let's hear Senator Lekino. You cannot mislead this committee. And if you are not conversant with the Public Audit Act, allow us to a little bit, you know, build your capacity on it. The auditors, once you are given a management letter, Governor, Section 31, 3, uh, 4 of the, audit, of the Public Audit Act clearly states the accounting officer shall, within 14 days from the day of receipt of the draft management letter, submit a response to the Auditor General including remedial actions that have been undertaken to address any, qualif any quali uh, qualification in the draft management letter. That section, you are supposed to deal with those issues that uh, led to the Auditor General uh, rendering his opinion as a disclaimer. So you need to really focus on that period because there's no way that uh, auditors will go and work and then follow the procedures that set out by the law and then now come to the next financial year to deal with things which you are given 14 days to deal with. I think the, the, the point, um, because I don't want uh, a, a debate here on this, the point the senator is trying to make, I don't know whether he's the one who used the word laziness in preparation of financial statements. There's a lot of laziness in preparation of these financial statements. Not only, it's not just that section on follow-up of previous findings, audit findings, that has not been addressed, and yet in the prior year you did it very well, it's very detailed, the part on budget execution by programs and uh, sub-programs, the famous uh, uh, case that we dealt with in Kiambu, is also blank. 
So you have not, even uh, in the financial statements, you didn't uh, indicate what your uh, budget was by program the, and, and what was the actual executed. And auditor, this is something that we need to agree on because who provides the template for reporting? Is it Treasury or the Public Accounting Standards Board? It, it is tre Treasury provides those guidelines, but Public Accounting Standards Board uh, defines the standards uh, to be followed by accounting officers and reporting entities. So the question is, if you receive a financial statement that does not meet the requirements that have been sent out to counties, how do you deal with that? Because you have seen counties where struggling to comply have attached probably the wrong budget execution schedules. And counties like Migori that have decided not to attach the budget execution schedule and have decided not to attach the follow-up of previous audit findings. In fact, if you look at the attachments and the notes that are required, there are quite a number of them that are blank. And that's why we are saying that we needed to have a conversation to find a way of it, making sure that these accounting officers and counties comply. And if they don't comply, because I've seen someone with a CPA number there. Why should that person be a member of the Institute of Public Accountants? Why should he sit in your cabinet? Senator Ochilo. Uh, yeah, uh, so thank you for the opportunity for information. If you look at uh, 163 and 164 of the Public Finance Management Act, uh, it uh, enumerates uh, very clearly uh, what uh, uh, a financial statement should, compr uh, should comprise. And uh, it's the general guide. Uh, if uh, it falls short of that, I think uh, it's something different. Thank you for that information. So that's the point we are trying to make. But um, uh, I want to urge, can we go back to this issue of the fire and we close it? Because this audit report stands or falls on the basis of the recommendation that we make on that. That is the uh, basis upon which the auditor uh, disclaimed uh, his opinion. So I want us to deal with this issue of lim limitation of scope, and then we agree on how to proceed to the other issues. If we agree that the records were destroyed, and subsequent audit findings are about uh, an availability of records, uh, then we, uh, t today, Governor, you, we will not be accepting fresh records that the auditor did not see. So if we agree on this matter, then subsequent issues, we shall just say we agree with the Auditor General's finding, agree with the Auditor General's finding, and then make final conclusions. So is there an issue that uh, you have not responded to that you have there in front of you that was asked by the Senators? So that in five minutes we close this and move to the next audit issue. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think the main issue was how did the county government of Migori pay 1.5 billion? I think that's the main issue here. As I would like by stating that it's true if Ms. closes by May, sometime May, sometime mid-June. That one means any procurement process cannot take place. So whatever has reached, has passed the procurement stage, it reaches now internet banking, waiting for payment to be, be done. Because there's no way you can pay any supplier or contractor without following the IFMIS process. So even if IFMIS closes, like now in Migori, we have closed the procurement process by 15th of this month, we are closing, by 15th of May. It means any procurement process cannot take place because IFMIS will be closed. So any uh, item which has been fed in the system is what will be paid when funds are, uh, become available. So the 1.5 billion was already in the IFMIS, had passed the IFMIS. It's not, it was not being processed. So that one should be very clear, Chair, that whatever 1.5 billion which was being paid was not a fresh instantiations being done after the fire had taken place. There were items which had already done, were done and they were waiting payments in internet banking. Uh, Chair. The problem with technicians is that uh, they see trees, not the forest. The 1.5 billion. The supporting documentation for the 1.5 billion, where was it supposed to be? In the burnt stores? Yes, yeah. Every document, all files were in the burnt stores. 
So what we're saying is that the, the vouchers and everything supporting the 1.5 billion was raised down. Yes. That's a, that's a fact. Yes. And there was a question on recreation or reconstruction, which the, uh, the governor attempted to address. Just tell us, how are you handling the reconstruction? Because if I give out an LSO, how many copies does the government keep? Uh, basically, there are the, the three fact, the, the three triplicates. There are three. three it's original, duplicate, and triplicate. Okay. So the, the supplier goes with the original. Yes. The others remain with the original. When we are seated here, we are real. And we don't want to bring hypothetical oh, oh. situations, okay. imaginary situations. There's a point of order here. Yeah. And the, Senator, the, the, make yes, a point of order should not last the, more the, than a minute. Yeah, sure. Just the point of order, Governor, is two positions you, know, you have to, to adapt. Either you can be able to avail the backup. Because what you have said is very material. That... Uh, that those are payments that have been da done within and inside IFMIS. So the explanation exists. Now, so then the earlier uh, informant, the earlier proclamation you had made, then should stand that if those payments are inside IFMIS and the, the owners and the beneficiaries are known and the reasons why they were paid, it is all the reason then why you should stand up with the first proclamation that it is possible to to reconstruct and explain the 1.5 billion in total. You oh, know, okay, Senator, yeah. Senator, let the governor state his case. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, Chairman, I just wanted to state it very, very clearly that the 1.5 can be traced and accounted for completely via the records that are available. Payments made via IFMIS, and if they were made to suppliers, it can be ascertained. It is real. Uh, I also mentioned here that out of this, we paid salaries. And if you count, those are three months. Look at my wage bill per month. Do you want to say that uh, even the over 200 million that I pay per month, if it is multiplied by three, it becomes over 600 and paid via here? Do you want to doubt that that is also money that will battle it? I don't think it is. Yes. No, no, uh, can, and, you, and can, you, can you uh, wind and, up, Senator? Sorry, Governor. I want to wind up. Wind up. Um, uh, my Senator took us through a lot of uh, things here under the Public Finance Management Act. I accept those theoretical things you have uh, told us. Sour, sour. Uh, uh, so, Governor, I think, I think let's use parliamentary language. Yeah, Those are statutory uh, provisions. Yes. That is not theory. Theory is theory. things that come in, from the universities and chairman, research stations. Chairman, in the, relation the, to this, the, the, the senator cited the PFM Act. Yeah. So use the word statutory but, rather than theoretical okay, because so we are not engaged in a theoretical statutory. exercise. Those legal requirements. Yes. But he's insinuating that there can't be a situation like that. Eh? He's living in that perfect world whereby something has happened, but is denying. So that kind of imagination <laughs> is what I really Chair, want to clear. Just uh, on a point of order, I, I, I would like to Make request. It very brief. I would like to request that uh, this matter, the governor has already admitted that they are backup, and that every single penny can be traced. I would request that we close that matter. We, when we retreat to write our report, then we'll be able to come up with recommendations and cite the, uh, the oversight from the governor's perspective of not having done what he's now saying he's going to do. And then where the law comes in, we can be able to come up with recommendation. Otherwise, we're going to dwell on this one particular matter throughout the That's day. That's why I'm giving guidance that let the governor finalize and dis dis disrupted, then we give the way forward. So, members... Governor, final uh, comment on this, if any? On, on the fire, uh, I've said that uh, it has given us a lot of uh, the so-called limitation of scope. Yeah, because um, the auditor gave us that disclaimer as a result of having not found everything he wanted. He could have made some. Otherwise, had he found everything, our... Audited, audited accounts would have been unqualified. Yeah. Okay. Had, had, had he 
Yes. Had he? Had he? Had he? Yeah. Uh, but, but he missed. He but, missed but some. But he, he did. He did not. He did not. Let's and, let's and let's, let's agree to proceed as follows. Order, Governor, Senator Omanga. Chair, I think. Uh, Okay, as uh, Senator Ledama said, the governor is simply saying he's got all this evidence, it can be traced and all that. To be fair to him, Chair, why can't we maybe you give him like seven days to bring up that uh, report? Just the way we've done with other counties where the information we get is not adding up so that he brings these stresses. Because if it's 1.5, then he's able to account for maybe 1.45 billion then at least with that you can be able to to pull figures together before we write our report i think then uh, let's let's proceed to the next issue and i want to give some uh, some directions not uh, i'm not making the final judgment because we'll do that when you're writing our report the response by the governor written response does not address the issue it has talked of the task force it has talked of dci it has talked of investigations it has talked of mitigations what you ought to have done was to take 1.5 billion spent during that duration and break it down and say 600 million went into salaries. No one will doubt that salaries were paid. 200 million went to the assembly. No one will doubt that the assembly got money. 400 million went into project ABCD. That way, we would cut this conversation. But your response talks of generalities. Without that specificity, we maintain that the findings of the Auditor General are valid. So it is a matter that will then be left to interpretation. But if you commit that within seven days, as proposed by Senator Manga, you are able to itemize the expenditure during that duration, that would take us one step forward. Obviously, the only step that will be missing will be the documentary evidence to support that expenditure, uh, which you must find a way of re reconstructing. Anything short of that we reach the conclusion that 1.5 billion cannot be properly accounted for. Number two, there are issues around fire and disaster risk management. And um, I, I think, uh, Governor, it would be a little bit of an embarrassment that in the great South Nyanza, which Homer Bay County is part of and Migori County is part of, I know we don't have a functional firefighting engine in Homer Bay, and we'll be with the governor for Homer Bay tomorrow to discuss some of those issues. It is quite uh, worrying that a block of three million people would not have fire engines. An area that relies on trade. Our women in those marketplaces are sitting ducks in the event of fire. This is something that must be taken very seriously. You have cited the challenges with procurement. You are the CEO and your duty is to act. And we'll be making certain recommendations as a committee, maybe on how Treasury or Ministry of Revolution can guide counties to come up with a proper risk and disaster management framework. It is not enough to have an emergency fund. There needs to be procedures around redundancy, around backup, around retention policies for documents that uh, counties should uh, adhere to. Finally, Senator Ochilayako has read extensively from the law. And those sections of the law, PFM Act, Constitution, Public Audit Act, has the consequences for not complying as he had described. And I think, Senator Ochilayako, all is not lost. Because even if the governor has not invoked the um, provisions of those acts, we have the capacity as Senate to make recommendations that people take responsibility in line with the sections that he had quoted. I think we can leave that. Uh, now, can you, uh, do you want to confirm that you can provide that schedule or do we just proceed uh, on the basis that it is not available? Okay, Bwana well, Chairman, um, my technical team is telling me that within those seven days, we can avail the breakdown of this 1.5 billion. So, uh, seven days, I want to uh, direct that you submit it to the Auditor General, and then the Auditor General submit a report to us within uh, a further seven days, because we'd like you to look at it first, and then uh, convey it to us within uh, seven days. So, total of 14 days. And it is still honorable chair, because then we have the schedule of how we really constructed from the they be able at least to, to dissect, because we, we the 1.5 even without the breakdown. Okay. Well,
Senator Uchina yako, final word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, so that you include it in your direction. Um, the, the law, and uh, I'm sorry to keep on talking about the law, but that's what defends us and protects us, including the county government. Now, um, it uh, talks about uh, the uh, electronic version. It also talks about backup. Eh? I think it would be appropriate if you direct that uh, the Auditor General uh, confirms that these measures are now being complied with going forward, because we don't know. Even today, a fire may erupt in Migori, and may erupt here in Nairobi or anywhere else. So we need to have assurance going forward that uh, there is electronic backup and there is actual backup for all this information so that in future we do not have to spend a whole morning talking about things that we would have prevented. I think you can capture that and uh, effective, effectiveness of internal controls, isn't it? Because it, it's, it's more... Yes, yes. Uh, future, future occurrences. Now, uh, we have dealt with this issue of fire, and it's going to crop up in several other audit findings that we are going to go through. I want to bring the attention of the governor to his financial statements, and uh, that would be page, page, um, page 5, Roman numeral 5. The introductory, the introductory section that is signed, the forward by the CC Finance and Economic Planning. And Governor refer to the schedule on performance summary for the 2017-2018 financial year. It's page five. This five that is written as a V. Is that Roman numeral or Arabic? Chair, just a point of order. Are we moving to the uh, uh, budget analysis? No, 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 no. This is something I want us to deal with before we go back to the audit issues. Okay. Yeah. This is from. Not the Auditor General's report, but the financial statement. Now, the pack, the pack that the governor has given us.